Hello there and welcome to Marketing Insights Live. Today we're talking about webinars and not just any kind of webinar, but webinars that sell. I don't know if you've tried it before, but I've tried to sell in, a, in webinars and I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> I can use webinars to build my list, which is fine, just giving free stuff, but when I'm trying to sell in a webinar, to be honest, I don't feel very comfortable and I don't know how to do it. That's the bottom line. So if you're in the same boat, whether you've tried selling in a webinar or you're just still thinking about it, then you're going to like this um, presentation today because I am interviewing somebody who is an expert at webinars that sell. And these are not the types of webinars where they just pitch and pitch, but these are teaching selling webinars. So stick around, okay? My name is Lexi Rodrigo. I am a content creator, blog editor, copywriter, and lifelong learner. And I love to share what I learn with business owners and marketers like you so that you can be seen, be heard, and be known. If you're watching this video, say hello in the comments because that is the only way that I'm going to see who's watching. Okay, um, now let me introduce my guest. She is Diane Holmes. Her name is Diane Holmes. We work together and at Miracy, she is our um, evangelist. And what that means is that she has actually delivered uh, probably more than 100 webinars for Miracy. We're going to ask her later on if she knows the exact number. And these webinars that Diane delivers are responsible for hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue. So hello, Diane. Hello. Hi, Lexi. And hi, Lexi's audience. It's great to be here. So, Diane, before I start asking you questions, um, introduce yourself briefly. Who are you and what do you do? Okay, so I'm Diane Holmes. Um, I'm the creator of uh, a course, Damn Good Webinar, and I'm a big marketing geek, and I love all things marketing, including webinars, and I think they're incredibly powerful and transformational for your audience, and so that's, uh, that's really what I do. And... How, wait, hang on, let's back up. What is a webinar? Okay, so that's <laughs> a really, it's a really good question because as I talked with people, I found that they often didn't know what that was. They were confusing webinar software with kind of what we're talking about as insiders, um, as marketers, when we talk about webinars, we're actually talking about something really specific. We're talking about marketing webinars, which are webinars that actually convert um, and they can, you can convert a number of different things, especially an offer that you're selling, right? And so it's a way of bringing your offer to an audience and creating a relationship. And then for those people who it is right for them, um, you know, they join or buy your offer and become your customers. And so that's what we, we're meaning when we talk about a marketing or a, a teaching selling webinar. But what are the essential elements of a webinar, for example, when I do a live streaming video and let's say I share my screen and then I make an offer, does that make it a webinar? <laughs> That's such a good question. Um, no, it really, it really doesn't um, in, in what we're talking about. And in fact, if you could just um, go on video, make an offer and have people buy uh, that would be pretty exciting, right? Um, except that, you know, most people are not sitting around hoping that somebody sells something to them so that they can just spend a bunch of money. And so what we want to do as marketers is really create a relationship with people, have them get to know us a little bit. Um, we want to get to know them. And so we do this in when we're talking about a a webinar by offering them value, right? Offering them something that really is meaningful to them that also relates to our offer. So we show up, uh, we deliver a lot of great content and they're excited to show up because they want that content. 
And then at the end, and this is what it looks like, but it's not really what's going on. It looks like we give great content, then we make an offer. Um, and, and that's all there is to it. But it turns out there's actually a lot more tricks um, behind the scenes that we're doing. But primarily, we're offering a lot of value. And then for the right people, if they want to go further with us, if they want more of our help, then they buy our offer. Now, Diane, how did you get so good at delivering and, first of all, creating and then putting together and then delivering webinars? Um, that's, a, that's a fun question because I got good by being really terrified and doing it anyway. And I think that's one of the best ways that we learn when we're launching an online business is that we just step up to the plate and you know, learn as much as we can, take it on, and then do it. You know, and it's the doing it that really gives us the experience. And so, as you mentioned, we work together. And um, I'm the evangelist for Miracy, and so I was hired by Miracy to come in and to do these teaching selling webinars for Course Builders Laboratory, which is the flagship course that we sell, and to replace the CEO, Dana Ini. Um, as the person who was doing those. And so I had to come in, learn how to do it, and then learn how to do it at that level, um, which is sort of like being in an incubator, right? You just like, um, you learn really fast and you ramp up fast. And that's kind of my entrance into doing it. But I came from a big background in teaching and in marketing. And so at least I was able to rely on being comfortable with those aspects. Okay, sorry, I got um, distracted there for a second because somebody was saying that they couldn't hear you. Oh. So I just wanted to check if they can hear you now. Um, so Bob, Bob is the one Hi, Bob. who, okay, now they can hear you, great. Okay. Thank you, and then fortunately I checked out the comments. Okay, yes. so, yeah, I know that, um, Diane, you were hired to deliver webinars for Miracy. Um, and most of those webinars previously were, no, all of those webinars previously were only delivered by Danny Inney, right. um, who is the founder and CEO of Miracy. And Danny is such an excellent, excellent presenter. Yes. He and really is. Yeah. And so, you know, it was really a, he's a tough act for you to follow, but you have done such an amazing job. And I know that Danny's great because that's how I became a student of his was from watching one of his webinars and then uh, purchasing his program. Was that how you became a part of the Miracy community as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've actually been a part of the community since he launched um, the Miracy, which, you know, it was previously called Firepool Marketing. And um, I attended his webinars, you know, I read his emails, and I bought his courses. And, you know, there is such a wonderful relationship you can build. Um, you know, you build one through emails, but there's a whole different level that you get to when you build that relationship on a webinar, because, you know, it's, you get to be yourself. People get to hear your voice. Um, they're interactive. Um, you know, we call that engagement. Um, and you can ask questions and have your, you know, so it's more, it is more similar to a relationship for one thing. Um, but when you sit with somebody for an hour and they teach you and they're really there for you, that creates a different level of relationship. Yeah, because uh, the webinar that I saw, when I watched that webinar, I didn't even know Danny. So he provided that webinar through a partner. So I knew the partner. Mm -hmm. I was following the partner on email. The webinar was the first time I'd heard of Danny, but you know, it was enough for me to buy his program. So that's how powerful webinars are. Now, this is my next question for you. Um, are webinars still effective? It just seems to me like everyone is doing webinars. I know when I got started online, um, not a lot of online marketers were doing webinars. I think more, most of them were doing teleseminars yes. where you actually had to call on the phone and you couldn't see slides or anything like that, but not so much webinars. And, and of course, because 
it wasn't so common yet. It was a lot more powerful, right? But now it just feels like everyone's doing them. Are they still powerful? Do they still convert? Yeah, I think that um, I think they're still incredibly powerful. I think that what you and I see is that we're insiders in a very specific niche, which is online entrepreneurship and online marketing. And there are, you know, there's just a much higher number of webinars that are done than are done in a whole lot of other niches. So in other niches, and you know, it could be, you know, like maybe you're you're selling an offer to other project managers, or maybe you're teaching people how to do golf, or, you know, maybe you're teaching people yoga. You know, like they don't see as many webinars as we see. I think in our niche, it is true. Um, people are so used to webinars that we're having to change up the game a little bit and find new ways to, you know, like enter it's, it's kind of a combination of entertaining and education. Um, and, and also we have to reassure people a lot now that in a way we didn't used to that we're even live because in our niche, you know, it's so common to have these pre-recorded webinars. But when you're doing a live webinar, they're still incredibly powerful and in a way that emails just aren't, you know, um, in a way that, you know, it would take you a long time, like maybe even a year to develop that kind of relationship. So I still highly recommend them. Good point about, uh, you know, the industry. You're right, because we're in online marketing then for us, it's common, but not necessarily for all other industries. So now let's talk specifically about your expertise, which is the teaching selling webinar. What is a teaching selling webinar? Okay, so at a real basic level, um, a teaching selling webinar is not just teaching and selling. You're actually doing something very specific that goes on behind the scenes that people are not even aware of. So what they're aware of is that you're giving them content that they're really interested in, right? And that's why they're showing up and you really wanna honor that and provide you know great value for them. But behind the scenes, what you're doing all the way through from the from the introduction, the time you start, from the very moment you say hello to them, all the way to the end, is that you're creating a relationship and you're teaching them the value of your offer. And so the teaching is very, very specific. And so while you're giving them what it is they want, you're teaching in a way that points out, hey, here's the real problem we're we're solving. Here's the real solution. Here's what it would look like. And here's my solution. You can see, you know what? It's exactly what you need. So... Um, what are the common mistakes that you see marketers making with their webinars? Like you mentioned earlier, a lot of people think, oh, you provide value and then you sell, but it's actually not like that. But what are some of the ways, like more specific ways that, uh, they're manifesting this, um, that look to you like mistakes and which is why they're probably not converting as well as they can. Right. That's a great question. Um, one of the things I see people doing is they they teach what they want to teach. And, you know, they, they feel like they know the they know they know the subject. They're experts in the subject and they want to teach that. But they are. That's very different than being in the head of the person who has the problem and who wants a solution and what they actually want to learn. And so I'll see people do one of two things. One is they'll take some sort of piece of education directly from their offer, and they'll make that what they teach in their webinar. And very few audience members are really hoping, gee, I hope I can spend time with you teaching me a part of an offer that I don't own, right? And so like, that's not really a match for what they're hoping, which is to have their problem solved. The other thing that I really see them doing is not understanding what people what people find exciting and sticky. And the, the education is actually kind of boring. And so this is where there's a piece of entertainment that is really associated with the education, where the education, what you want is for people, for you to say, this is, you know, like, here's what I'm gonna teach you, right? And for them to be like, wow, that's going to be 
amazing. I can't wait to learn that. And they say that for two reasons. One is that this is what's on their mind they, and they have a problem this will solve. The other thing is, wow, you're going to solve it in a way that is exciting to them. So those are the two big things that I see people do wrong. So what is the right way to determine what your webinar should be about? Given that you have offer A, how do you figure out the topic for your webinar? Okay, that's really good because that's exactly what um, I actually help people do. And when I work with clients, the first thing that I look at is what is their offer, right? And then I look at who is in their audience. And so there are, a couple, there are some specifics to that, um, but just a couple to, to get you started, right? So that you can try to do this is um, when you're looking at your offer, like what is the experience of owning that offer? How do people come into it and what is it that they're being presented with? And oftentimes I find that the creator of the offer actually has no idea, right? <laughs> it's like what they th are thinking, how they think of their offer is very different than how it's experienced. And so what I will find is that they think there are things about the offer that are selling points, such as this, off this course lasts 16 weeks right? And I know from the audience perspective, they're thinking, you mean it's, it's going to take me more than seven minutes? It's going to take me 16 weeks? Wow. So that, that, that's not a selling point. That's actually an objection to overcome. Why would you need to take 16 weeks? That's something we need to teach in the, in the actual webinar so that by the time they hear that it's 16 weeks, they think, well, thank goodness, because it's going to take 16 weeks and I'm so glad you're going to provide that to me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the ways that you assess, you know, like what you're going to teach. Um, and so going back to the audience, which is that other end, right? Like on one end, there's the offer and on the other end, there's the audience and you want them to come together. So when I look at the audience, people have, most people have done avatar work or like their ideal buyer, or client, right? They've, they've done work on that. And I have never found that I could use any of it because it tends to be things that honestly don't matter when I'm writing a webinar. So let me tell you what does matter. What matters is how do your people think and how do they talk? Because I want to talk their language and I want to address exactly what it is they're thinking so that it's, so that they're saying, oh my gosh, you know me. You get me. You understand me. I, I really trust you a lot. Thank you for that. If that makes sense, you know, it's it's really just bringing these two things together. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. So before I ask my next question, I just want to remind our viewers to say hello in the comments so that I know who you are. That's the only way I know. So I want to say hi to Bob Lankford. Hi, Bob. Thanks for joining us and thanks for letting me know there was a problem with Diane's audio earlier on. Um, there are a few other people watching, but I can't see who they are. So say hello, guys. Um, okay, so it's interesting that the, the process you described is actually kind of like reverse engineering, right? Where you said you look at your offer yeah. first and then you look at how um, will your audience experience this offer and sort of work backwards and and that's how you figure out what should be in your webinar. So great stuff. So guys, if you have any questions for Diane, please post them in the comments so that she can respond. If you're watching this, then lucky you because Diane will respond to your questions live. But if you're watching the recording, go ahead and post your questions in the comments anyways, because I will check later on to see if there are any questions that were submitted after uh, we broadcast. And, um, and because I work with Diane, I can tap her and ask her to answer them later on. So Kim is saying hello. Hi, Kim. Kim is actually in health and wellness. So, and that is an area that I believe is not yet saturated when it comes to webinars. So Kim, um, I'm glad that you joined us you're going to have a, a lot of fun doing webinars, I think. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what if I don't have an email list yet, or an, I have an email list, but it's still very small. I have a very sm small audience, 
can I still do webinars? Um, you know, that's a really good question. And you know, like, I'm going to point out the obvious here, which is when you put on a webinar, somebody has to attend, right? And you need to get your audience from some place. And so either you have your own audience or you borrow somebody else's audience, right? And so like right now, I'm saying hello to Lexi's audience and um, talking to them. And so that's an example of when I say borrow, you know, you're, you're actually talking to somebody's audience who would be interested in what you wanna, you know, in, in what your topic is. And the third one is that you buy an audience, which is called advertising, right? And so, you know, like one of the things we, that's everybody's talking about now is Facebook ads, right? And that's an example of buying an audience. But um, generally speaking, it's an interesting thing when you're on our side, right? The, um, the, the person who has created the offer and who's doing the marketing, and we're trying to get the message out to people who are interested, um, but, Ultimately, at a real basic level, it's a math issue. And what that means is that it's going to take a certain number of people in your audience, and then you're going to convert a certain percentage of that into buyers, right? And that percentage, like I know everybody's going to ask me, what is the percentage? And it depends on a lot of things. It depends on your niche and what your personal percentage is going to be for you and your audience. Uh, but it also is going to depend on things like what is your price point and and what does that price point mean to your audience? So um, if you're selling something that's $3,000 and you're selling it to an audience where they're used to buying things at $100,000, $3,000 is very low. Very low. <laughs> I'm getting a <laughs> big echo all of a sudden, Lexi. Sorry about that. No worries. I'll just keep going. Um Hang on, hang on, Diane, because oh, okay. they said they couldn't hear you guys. Can you hear Diane again? Are you hearing her now? I just did something with my microphone, so that was my fault. Okay, all right, it should be back now. Thank okay. you, Amy. Thank you, Svetlana. Thank you, Zeph, for letting me know about my audio issue. Okay, that was totally my fault. Okay, keep going, Diane. So, Diane, <laughs> I think you got caught off when you were talking about um, advertising. So, right. paying, paying. Right. And so, the third way to get an audience is to actually buy to buy that audience, which is called advertising, like Facebook ads and funnels, um, is a way of getting what we call cold traffic, right? Which is people who don't know you, you're actually buying their attention by putting an ad in front of them. Um, and so anyway, so what I wanna tell you is that it is important you know where you're gonna get your audience and that you get enough of an audience that you can actually convert. Because at a real basic level, it's a math problem, right? And so if you only have, um, 10 people come to your webinar, but your conversion rate, right, that's the number of people who buy, tends to be about 2%, well, you're probably not going to make a sale, right? You don't have enough people there to to really get a conversion. You're, if you had 100 people, then you'd get two or three sales. So um, what this ends up um, meaning is that there's a long-term question about your audience and where are you getting people to come to your um, to come to your webinars. But that's ultimately a question, you know, where do you get your leads that you answer, you know, for your online business. So it's not a new question; it's just a question about. So if you had an e if you had if you were putting out emails, who's who is reading your emails? If you're doing a webinar, who is doing your webinars? Now what? I want to address like what order do you do things in? Like if you don't necessarily have a big enough audience now, can you go ahead and start learning about webinars? Yeah, absolutely. I think that we we learn in not the perfect order, right? We learn in the order that kind of interests us as we're presented information. Um, but when you launch by that point, you actually do need to know where you're going to get your people from. And at that point, I hope you know <laughs> uh, what, what your strategy is for, for your audience. So I'm glad you pointed out borrowing other people's audiences and also paying for audiences because that actually applies to everyone and not just somebody who doesn't have an audience. Right. Because, for example, at Miracy, we have a huge audience. 
I, I don't know what the number is exactly, but probably 70,000 subscribers now. It might be more. Um, but even though we have a huge audience, we still do those two other things. We still borrow other people's audiences. We partner with people whose um, businesses are aligned with ours and we present to them, present our offer to them. Right. And we also do paid advertising. So um, those are options for everybody, no matter what your audience size. And as you pointed out, it's especially when you're paying for advertising, it's a matter of knowing that you will make your money back, correct? Which means that you have to have an offer that act, people actually buy. Right. And okay. when it comes to borrowing other people's audiences, what they want to know is that your offer is something that people already buy. So um, you made a good point where, you know, get good at it. Don't wait until you have an audience start getting comfortable with doing webinars because you can't, for example, approach a partner and then be completely lost <laughs> and, and, and practice with other people's audiences. So good stuff here. Guys, if you have any questions for Diane, ask them now while I have her here. Okay, now let's, um, let's do a, a hypothetical scenario okay. which is actually not very hypothetical because let's use me as a guinea pig and so as you know i offer coaching services um coaching or consulting where i help people with their content marketing they can um, get on skype with me for 45 minutes an hour and ask me all their questions about content marketing or if they want help with um uh, refining their message, I, for example, then they could hire me for that. Now, let's say I wanted to promote this service of mine. How do I use a webinar to do that? Is that is that possible? Can I yeah. use webinars to do that? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I here is my theory that on on webinars, and that is that whatever it is that you do, for example, you're doing coaching, right? You should be doing that on your webinar. And that should actually be part of what you're teaching. And in other words, you're teaching what is the experience like of being coached by you. So I would start with the offer, right? Which is a coaching, you know, coaching experience with you. And it is very specific, right? It's for content strategy and for really bringing your message down into something that's probably very sharp and crisp and then being able to scale that up into you know something that's ongoing and really serves you well and so then i would ask you where is your audience and let's say for example your audience is brand new to content marketing um, and they don't really know you well that also tells me wow i need to teach a little bit about who you are and why you're really good at what you do and i also need to teach what is content marketing and bring them not only through what is content marketing, but to the point that they realize not only must they do content marketing, but they're going to need a strategy for it and somebody on their side because, and there's probably some sort of logic that I would use, such as it's hard to get there on your own, right? That there's a big learning curve and you could spend a year or two doing that, or you could work with somebody like Lexi. And so that's how I would think through it. Um, and then as we're putting together the teaching, right, as we were working together on your webinar, I would be looking for places where I could demonstrate what an amazing coach you are. And I would probably encourage you to do live um, several times, you know, two or three times during the webinar where you solicit questions, where you've set it up so that they actually have questions because, you know, that in itself, getting them to the point that they can ask a good question is, you know, like that's a, a fair amount of teaching. And then you're going to actually pick a couple great questions and coach on the spot. And what that would allow you to do is show exactly how good you are so that they don't have to trust you telling them how good you are. You can just present them with this experience and they can decide, oh my gosh, Lexi, you're so good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you for that quick coaching, Diane. You're welcome. But, uh, 
actually some of our viewers are actually co coaches and consultants as well. So they'll be able to apply that advice too. Um, so my next question is about the technology and equipment. Like what um, do you need in order to deliver a webinar and to do it in a professional and effective way? Um, that's a good question, and it's less than you think. Uh, the headset that I'm using is a $30 headset, and this is the one I use for webinars. It's the same headset that um, Danny uses. It's a Platonix. Uh, can you share the brand? Um, yeah, it's a Platonix uh, brand, and it's just a USB. Um, plugs right into my computer. Um, you're going to need some sort of webinar software. And, you know, there, there are so many platforms uh, out there. We use GoToWebinar at Miracy. Um, I've, I've seen Zoom is a, has meeting rooms, but it also has an add-on for webinars. Um, I'm real interested in testing Demio. Um, which I haven't tested yet. And so as soon as I do, I'll let you know how that goes. Um, in the past, one of the biggest problems that you face is the technology challenge. So just as, you know, like we're using Skype right now and then some software you have, um, and there's like a little bit of a lag between, um, you know, like what you're saying and then, you know, like your, your face on the screen. And you know, like that's technology for you. Um, but when you're delivering webinars, um, then the experience becomes, you know, really, you really want to make sure that there's not lags and things like that. Um, and so browser-based webinar platforms in the past have been really dicey. And so you really want to test out any platform that you're going to use and look for things like what happens with the video, um, you know, and what happens with other people. Ask your friends to get on with you and um, and then do it because it's not until you actually have listeners that oftentimes you uncover problems. Uh, but I will tell you that you're always going to hit problems and snags because that's just technology. And so what I do is I always have a backup plan uh, where I, I, I ask myself, what will happen if, you know, this goes wrong or that goes wrong? And I can tell you everything has gone wrong. And, you know, like your job as the host is is just to handle it with a lot of a lot of calm and a lot of um you know, make people comfortable and then use your backup plan. This is so true, Diane, because right before we went live, your audio was perfect. Right. We did a sound check, correct? Yes. And then as soon as I went live, your audio was just cut off. And because this has happened to me before, I knew like a workaround, not it's not perfect, but at least people can hear you, which is what matters. Right. So, and I'm glad you brought this up because my next question for you is, what is the most embarrassing moment that you've experienced during a webinar? <laughs> you know, so many. <laughs> um, I, I mean, like, probably the one that upset me the most was that my in the middle of a webinar my voice uh, muted my my microphone muted itself for 20 minutes and you like as a professional I don't want that to be somebody's experience right and and then you know like once I figured once I realized what was happening um, you know I, I unmuted and I had to keep going but it threw me off my game because like there's, you have to uh, really be in the zone and you're carrying not just your emotion, but you're carrying the excitement of the entire audience. And so um, it kind of clicks. There's a click you're aiming for where it, you kind of are like just really delivering well. And it threw me off, you know? Um, and so that was frustrating. I will tell you my very first webinar, here's what happened. Um, my house had uh, been hit, a tree in a, in a big storm had had the top of it had broken off, smashed into the roof and had caved in the bathroom, like the attic, the roof, everything had caved down. And the whole house smelled like rat poop from the attic. And it, it was still open. And I delivered my very first webinar with the roof open and it raining. Um, and I just didn't care. I was going to do it. Right. Um, and that really taught me that no matter what, you know, like you're there for the audience. And um, I've had all kinds of other crazy things happen. 
um, where even like I didn't even have control of my computer, like the help desk person had control of my computer because I'm troubleshooting at the last minute. You know, there's there's all kinds of things. But ultimately, you know, 99 percent of the time it's going to go well, you know, and the rest of the time um, you just tell people, hey, you know what? It's live. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, you know, this is something that happens when it's live. Hang in there. I'll be right back. You tell them and then you try and fix it. Yeah. So the moral of the story is the show must go on. Yep. And you don't quit after something goes wrong once or twice, because yep. otherwise you're not going to get the 99% that goes correctly. That goes right. Right. <laughs> okay. So. Let's switch to the other extreme. And what is the best, proudest moment that you've had during a webinar? Um, you know, there's so many good moments. There are some real reasons I love webinars. I think that it is the best way to create a wonderful relationship and that when you're giving great content to people, you can transform their lives. And I've had emails from people saying, I'm the best speaker they've ever heard. Um, the content was exactly what they needed. It made all the difference. They had wanted to quit and now they had hope again. Um, you know, just all kinds of really beautiful moments happen in a webinar um, because you're there long enough and you're really giving from yourself um, and they're getting to join you in that, you know, in that shared time together. Um, I professionally, you know, like my biggest question when I came aboard Miracy was, will I convert well enough? And obviously I had to hit a really high mark. Will I convert as well as Danny did um, when he did it? Because he's really phenomenal. And, um, at, you know, as you and I had said, we bought courses based on hearing his webinars. So um, when I actually hit the same conversion rate, I have to tell you, that was a really happy moment for me because I thought, okay, good. Um, I'm actually doing it and I'm doing a, I must be doing a good job now. <laughs> oh, you are absolutely. And that's why you're still Miracy's evangelist. So um, let's make me a guinea pig again. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the last time I tried to sell at a webinar, I felt like I had a hard time finding a balance between, um, you know, serving my audience and then presenting my offer. Like I felt like, yeah. When I presented my offer, it was too long. Like I took too much time. But then at the same time, I wanted to give them enough information about the offer. Right. Right. So right. how do you find that balance? Um, that's a really great question, because ultimately a lot of what you're doing is experimenting and dialing it in. You know, dialing it in, meaning like trying to get it closer and closer and closer to something that really works. And let me tell you what works is being interesting to your audience. So it's never about the length. It's about what do they need right in this moment? And are you giving them what they need in a way that is really interesting to them? And so uh, one of the things we talk about in the land of webinars behind the scenes is your stick rate, uh, which means that do people stay, right? Do they stay all the way through the webinar? Because in order for it to convert, you actually need them to get the full experience. And all that teaching is in place in order to take them exactly where they are in their understanding to the point of your offer and then to invite them into your offer. And honestly, if you do the teaching right, you your selling is done. All you're doing is inviting them into your offer and telling them details about it. But like, you don't need to push hard or sell. So to answer your question on how much time do you take, um, I think that it depends on what your call to action is and what price range you're at. Uh, so in other words, like if you're, if you're selling um, something that's like $7, then they don't need very much to just buy that. And if you spent a lot of time, then they would be going, You're, why are you still selling me? Because I'm already sold. Um, and so kind of you want to dial in based on where your audience is and how much do they need in order to be really excited. And so one of the things I did with Course Builders Laboratory is I lengthened the amount of time. I just We were not giving the specifics of what's inside each module. And I really felt that, you know, people really needed to know 
at least a couple things in every module so that they could be as excited as I am. And so it wasn't about length, it was about excitement and what did I need to give them right in that moment. So here's another problem that I used to have, um, but I don't anymore. <laughs> but I know it's a common um, obstacle for a lot of people. It's when they actually ask for the sale, when they actually invite people to join my program, buy my course, you know, buy my stuff. Then I remember years ago feeling really cringy when it got to that part. So yeah. what is your advice for people who still have a difficult time asking for the sale? I, I really, sorry, I'm getting some feedback here. There we go. Can you still hear me? Oh, yes. Okay, good. Um, you know, I have a lot of compassion for this Lexi and for being in that position. And there's a couple things that go into it. One is it kind of depends on your personality type. And if you're like super sensitive and you're used to really cueing into other people and are they happy and are they not happy, which I have that personality type, then you tend to want to back off sales because oh my gosh they might not be happy if you if you ask them if they want to buy right i mean that's kind of the fear the other thing that plays into this is your own money talk and how you were raised and you know are you raised to where it's okay to offer somebody something of great value that really might help them and give a price right and so you know, like i also grew up where i'm completely comfortable giving away free stuff but when you ask for money, oh my gosh, you know, like, oh, I don't think I can do that, right? And so what you do is you set that aside because that is not serving your audience and you're here to serve them. You're here to help them and make a difference. And there are several things that you need to understand. The first is the things that you have gotten in life that helped you the most, the education, the offer, whatever, you bought that and it was really worth it to you, right? And so you want to play in that field of, this is how we deliver really helpful things to people and how we serve them is we step into this and we feel really good about it. Um, and you know, the second thing is to realize that if you've done your webinar, you know, to where all the teaching is in place, which is another word for selling, honestly, when you're teaching the value, you're basically allowing them to sell themselves. Then you get to the end, all you're doing is inviting them in. And that's a very comfortable place for most people is to say, let me tell you how wonderful this is. I'm so excited. I would love to work with you. Here's what it would be like, right? That's all, um, that, there's nothing high pressure about that. Um, and it's just a nice place to be. You can kind of get back into, um, a giving frame of mind, um, an, a supportive frame of mind, a service frame of mind, um, and you need to get really comfortable saying prices. So here's what I did in order to get comfortable myself, is I practiced mentally and verbally going up in price and telling people prices, you know, like in my, in my imagination, upwards of $50,000. And once I got comfortable being able to tell people I charge $50,000 for that, and you could tell, like, I'm completely comfortable saying that. I don't have any problem saying, you know, I'm, I have a course that can help you with your webinars and it's six ninety seven. dollars um, You know, like, it's, in other words, I'm just so comfortable with it now that I've hit, my, I've figured out where my upper limit is and I've, I've raised it. I keep raising it so that I feel really comfortable with the prices that I'm doing. So that's a really good tip, which is to practice delivering it so you have some kind of like a script and then you just practice do you say it out loud or yeah. just in your mind um yeah i i did um and you know I, there's something i've honestly been working on uh for a couple of years because i had the luxury of being around people who were making six seven and eight figures in their businesses and I really listened to how they talked about money, right? And when you're just starting off, which is, you know, like where I've been, um, anything over zero feels like a 100% increase, right? It feels like a big deal. And if you're bringing money issues into it, things get really tangled. And so what I did was I started practicing being them. 
I, if I could be them, then being me gets really easy, right? And if they're talking about half a million dollars, like it's a small part of what they need for the year, then, you know, then when I get back to, to what I'm doing, I, I go, oh, you know what? This is, this is not a big deal. This just happens to be what the price that I can offer so that I'm sustainable and a good price for them to come inside. And that's all we're doing here. Absolutely. And that's another good point, Diane, because I, I know that part of the reason I'm much more comfortable asking for not just for the sale, but asking for the prices that I do ask for with my clients is because I have been working with Danny and with our clients who are uh, and, and some of my clients, too, who, who, who charge premium prices. Right. And so a good tip for our viewers is to surround yourself with people who are comfortable with asking for the sale and charging what they believe they're worth. Right. So right. surround yourself with people who are charging premium prices and are not apologetic about it. Right. Okay. So before I let you go, Diane, oh, hang on. Folks, if you have questions, please post them in the comments. I only saw one uh, question, which was about the tech. So, and we've covered that, uh, the medium. Okay, so uh, while we're watching for questions, Diane has a very special offer for you guys, a very generous offer. So when Diane told me about this, I asked her, are you sure you want to make this <laughs> offer? So uh, Diane, uh, tell us about it. Okay, so... If I know that so many of you are wondering, like, is a webinar really right for me, right? And it's hard to answer that question on your own. You know, like it helps if you can actually talk to an expert and get a little feedback on, is it right for you and your personality and where you wanna take your business? Is it right for your offer? Is it right for your audience? And I'm happy to do that. Um, and so what I have set up is for the next week, I am gonna take strategy, free strategy calls. And uh, we can find out, you know, like is, is a webinar right for you? And if you already have a webinar, here's the question you should be asking. Is my webinar good enough, right? Is it where it needs to be? And, um, and I can help you diagnose that as well and kind of come to some sort of conclusion with that. So um, I have a link for you. And do you want me to go ahead and give it, Lexi? Yes, and it's also being displayed right now. But go ahead and, okay. and say the link. Perfect, perfect. Um, it's my name. So it's diane-holmes.youcanbook.me. So let me spell it for you. It's Diane, D-I-A-N-E. Um, hyphen homes h-o-l-m-e-s dot you can book dot me so pretty simple but i would love to talk with you and um i do have and this is completely free just it absolutely there absolutely it's uh it's a fun thing to do um and i love learning about people's businesses and what their goals are and so it's it's a fun thing yeah, and that's a very generous. Um, that's very generous of you, Diane, to offer your time for free so people can explore webinars and see if it's right for them, or if they've already been, already been doing webinars, to see how they can make them even better. So I'm not seeing any questions in the comments. I probably, because I had a ton of questions for you, I probably covered everybody else's questions as well. So, but for those of you who are watching our recording, if you have any questions that we didn't cover, go ahead and type them in the comments because I will be checking later on. Okay, guys. So thank you so much, Diane. Do you have any last words? Um, you guys, I, I hope you do decide to embrace webinars because they are so much fun. And in your business, I mean, you should be having fun. And that's really what I want to say is that every day should be fun when you show up. So I hope I see you in the future. I'd love to chat with you. And Lexi, this was a blast. Thank you so much for inviting me to come on your show. You're welcome. I just wish that the technology was better today. I am so sorry about that, but uh, we shall Don't figure it out. And I will have you again 
some time in the future in Marketing Insights Live. So folks, thanks for joining me and Diane. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I appreciate it so much because I know that that's time that you can't get back, right, Diane? But yeah. they chose to spend it with us. We just hope so that smart. <laughs> you, you got some value out of this that will help you in your business and, of course, in your life. So Thanks again. Join me again next week, guys, Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and have a good week ahead. Bye.